guys, welcome back to my channel. And as the title describes, we're gonna talk all about the Sephora VIB sale. I did do a video a little over a year ago talking about how to shop the Sephora VIB sale responsibly. I will have that video linked in the cards as well as in the description box in case you do plan on shopping the sale. It'll give you some advice on how to not overspend but still allow a little bit for a treat as well as restocking on things that you might need and go through. Obviously, things have changed. I'm on a no buy, now low by budget situation and I have a lot of notes about my feelings about the Sephora VIB sale kind of how to walk you through this if you're also on a budget or more specifically a no buy We've all heard about the Sephora VIB sale at this point um, if you didn't it's a sale it's coming soon and you know even with me kind of sticking in my own lane currently and not paying attention to marketing, not watching a ton of beauty review videos, not watching a ton of unboxings like I used to, and just deleting emails from stores. And the funniest thing is the first person that brought it up to me was my brother. My brother who does not do skincare, does not know anything about makeup, does not know anything about Sephora, he's the one who texted me and asked me about the sale coming up for a friend. The fact that my brother, who's not anywhere near this beauty world, was the one who brought it up to me and kind of spurred the panic where I realized I possibly could lose my status as Sephora VIB Rouge, um, and that there's a whole video about that. That's crazy. I think that's crazy that my brother knows about the Sephora VIB sales before I do, but that's how it was brought to my attention. And then of course, once you hear about something, you start seeing it everywhere or hearing about it everywhere. And I'm sure if you're anywhere on YouTube, anything related to beauty, you will hear about it. You'll hear recommendations, anti-hauls, um, how to shop it, what people are gonna buy. You're gonna start seeing a ton of hauls as well. And I urge you if you're on a budget or if you're trying to be more financially responsible to pick and choose who you choose to watch. So we're gonna talk about um, tips on how to shop the sale that are a little bit different from my original video, kind of my thoughts on it. We're also gonna go through all the new in at the end of this video. So if you plan on shopping, you know my opinion on products I've tried and products I haven't tried. What I might consider picking up for the sale, or maybe I'll skip the sale altogether because of one of these uh, tips I have for you guys. Basically, this video is gonna be how to handle the sale, whether you're on a no buy, low buy, budget, or you do plan on shopping. Details. This time around, the VIB Rouge will receive 20% off of everything online and in stores from April 26th through May 1st. May 2nd through May 6th, all tiers event starts and you'll be able to take 15% off of all purchases online and in store. Let's not lose our minds. A year ago, realized I was going crazy at all of these um, sales, so I kind of created rules and structures on how I shop for a sale. It takes a little preparation, it takes a little walking away and coming back to your list, but I urge you to do that if you plan on shopping the sale. I have a tendency to buy, 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 buy because it's on sale. And Hannah Louise Poston made a really great point in her VIB sale video about how the sale, while it seems like a huge discount, isn't really that big of a discount per item, even at luxury prices. And that was something that really shocked me when she broke down how much she would have actually saved if she waited for the sale or if she just bought what she wanted, which she valued at the full price. Sometimes with the sales, you end up spending way more than you ever planned on spending just because of the urgency, the frenzy, and this idea that it's on sale. So you're actually spending more money because you're buying more than what you would have at full price. And a lot of the times in my argument in the past would be, I'm gonna buy this because I love it and I'm gonna have a backup. For me, backups don't really make sense because what ends up happening is I still spend that money that I planned on spending either way. So let's say I buy $100 worth of backups and I get 20% off, so I spent $80. Well, I'm gonna end up taking that savings of $20 and probably spending three times that amount and forgetting about my backups and not going through my backups 
or the backups are gonna go bad. For me, it just never worked out to actually saving money. That being said, I still had some staples that I used to always use. There's certain items I used to always repurchase, like my Kogan Doe cleansing water, my Kogan Doe cleansing wipes, and the Shiseido cotton pads. Shiseido cotton pads I don't buy anymore because I use reusable cotton rounds. It ends up saving me money in the long run, plus it's more sustainable. I'm not 100% zero waste, I'm not 100% sustainable, but I am doing what I can and one of those switches this year was reusable cotton rounds. The cleansing water I used up, but I have some other ones I still need to use up. And honestly, I found one I really, really love from Lolly Beauty. So that's what I currently have and am using. And then in terms of the cleansing wipes, I still have plenty because I rarely use them. I, I'm very careful with how often I use a wipe. So I still have plenty. I don't need to stock up anymore. And if I really do need it, I can always purchase it because to me, the value of that product at full price, I would still purchase. I don't need to stock up and have backups and hoard products because I have a tendency to do that. If you're somebody who never uh, veers off of their skincare routine like your skincare routine is set you've been using the same products for years or months and you know it's not going anywhere then I could see the value in stocking up on those products because you're not someone who tries out new things or wants to try new things or shifts around in what they're using based on season and timing. So in that situation, that is something where I would recommend you should stock up on those items and save a little bit of money since you're planning on spending that money anyways through the year. So here are some key rules from the previous video as well as some new rules that I would recommend. Now, again, I don't wanna repeat myself too much, so if you're curious and need a little help and guidance to shop, then definitely check out that original video. Number one, focus on replacing items that you know you absolutely love and are absolutely gonna go through. Decide beforehand based on your current situation and your current budget on how much you're willing to spend as a treat yourself. Life is short and we should live it and we should enjoy things and we should work hard and purchase things that we want to add to our lives. I'm not about not shopping ever. I'm about for me and to hopefully inspire you guys in focusing on when and how much to spend per your situation and not letting other people's lifestyles dictate your lifestyle and your wants. I let that happen to me for a very long time and I, I'm i not happy about it. Decide beforehand. Before you even look at the site, before you even start adding things to your cart, decide how much set aside are you willing to part with from your income and your budget to treat yourself. And that will really help you decide on what you're gonna purchase in terms of a splurge or want versus a replenishment or a necessity. Even though technically no nothing is a necessity, we could get away with a lot less than what we're using. This is something that I mentioned in my first video and I'm gonna repeat because I think it's the most important thing is make a list, check it twice, check it three times because what happens is I will find that I'll make a list and it'll be a huge list. I'll see the total being like, be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then I'll remove things. Do I really want it? Do I really need it? Again, need is a very uh, gray area here. I find that I start editing my list and the longer I have my list, the less wants there are that I end up purchasing. I mean, you guys can see that week to week when I do my check-ins, even though now I'm allowed to buy things off my wish list, I'm not going crazy. I'm not using up my entire budget every week. In fact, I've had budget rolled over each week and I'm really proud of that fact because the old me would blow my budget and then some. A new rule for myself would to actually not stock up on items anymore unless I'm completely out. Because like I mentioned, I would buy two, three backups and forget about it or it would get misplaced and then I would find it later and it'd be expired. The other important thing to realize is my job predominantly is to test out new products. I'm always trying to test new products out, but how can I justify having a box of stockpile of things I love and of things coming in that I need to test out and review as part of my job. 
I have one face. I wash my face twice a day. I use skincare twice a day, maybe three times if I work out in the middle of the day. It's just not physically possible. It's very wasteful, it's not economical, and I have to remember my job is to try new products, so if I'm gonna buy things, I should probably buy new things to test out as well. And something I wanna reiterate, and it's a new thought, a new way of thinking is, would you buy these products at their full price, not on sale? If you don't see the value of the product not on sale at full price, and you would not purchase it ever at its original price, I don't think that you value this product enough to want to purchase it. Um, avoid that frenzy of, it's on sale, I'm saving so much money, I'm gonna buy it. I don't think I'm being very clear about this. Hannah explains it very, very well um, in her video about, for example, like a $20 lipstick a, where, where the savings is much less. Even though I'm not poo-pooing $2, $3 in savings, I think that's important. Two, $3 is like a cold brew for me and I really enjoy getting myself a cold brew in the afternoon. Um, I have, I have That's like a treat for me right now. That's a coffee. Like I am saving money and I'm gonna get a coffee. So if I plan on buying that lipstick and I'm saving two, $3, that's a great savings because now I can also buy myself a coffee. But I'm, I'm trying to a bit urge you guys to think like, would you, want this palette still or would you want this lipstick still if it was at its original price i think that's a clear way of describing this if you still want it at its original price and could see yourself at some point treating yourself to it at an original price but it happens to be your sale price right now then you can put it on your wish list and by no means am i giving you permission or anything like that. do what you want it's your money um it's your life i'm just kind of trying to help you guide you in case you were needing someone to kind of talk you out of things i'm here right now the final tip i have and want you guys to leave with before we go into the new in section and kind of my critique of all the new products is i want you to truly shop sales for the person that you are right now try to focus during sale times to shop sales responsibly by shopping for the person that you are right now in this very minute not the person that you wish you were and not the person that you think you could be and what i mean by that is so many times when it comes to fashion and beauty we have this tendency to feel like if i bought this mini dress i would feel so much more sexy and sexual and all these things but in reality i don't wear mini dresses because they're uncomfortable and being uncomfortable does not exude sexuality for me because i'm too focused on being uncomfortable i should not buy that mini dress because it's on sale because i'm thinking that it could be this answer for me to be more sexual and like have a sexual awakening or feel sexy because in reality i'm not going to feel sexy after the five minutes of me putting it on because the underwear i have to wear to like look good in that mini skirt and then me constantly worrying about flashing my hoo-ha to the world is not sexy because I'm not in a sexy frame of mind after that 10 minutes of leaving the house. I'm now in a worried, uncomfortable state of mind. That's what I mean. If you are not somebody that's gonna wear bold, bright colors, I don't know that buying a bold, bright color eyeshadow palette because it's on sale is gonna suddenly shift that mindset. Thought it would be fun to go through all the new in sections on the Sephora website and give you my thoughts because a lot of you guys have been DMing, asking me what my thoughts are on certain products that you know I've gotten in and have liked if I would recommend it for the sale so as always with my recommendations take it with a grain of salt my skin is not your skin my lifestyle is not your lifestyle just because I like a product doesn't mean you need to buy it but if you were considering it and you were looking for one of these items to replenish your skincare routine your makeup routine and you were curious about this product and I happen to have tested it and I enjoy it or I don't I hope my opinion helps you make that decision on what to replenish your collection and your routine with. Um, if you are on a no buy, stop watching. You don't need anything. The whole point of a no buy is to feel that FOMO, to feel 
like the sale is happening and you're missing out, have all those emotions and then realize that it's okay. It's totally okay that you missed out. It's not that important. It's not the end of the world. You will get through this. Your no buy is not forever. Your no buy is just to help you work through a lot of different habits and men mental struggles that you might have with shopping. I get it because if I didn't put myself on that strict no buy the first quarter and now on a budget, I wouldn't feel these things that have made me a better person, that have made me more responsible, that have made me just rethink a lot of things. I should really just delete this app, but I it's convenient for me to like do videos like this. Let's start with skincare because I feel like I have tried more of that. Laneige Lip Glowy Balm, $15. I actually really like this product. I have one in my purse, one on my makeup counter, and I believe I hid one in the car. Not anything super different from other lip balms that other than it's a squeezy tube. Um, I usually typically have them in like sticks. Yeah, I like the taste of them. I like the light fragrance. There's nothing in it that irritates me. It's hydrating, it's nourishing, it's a lightweight hydrator. I, I like it, there's nothing wrong with it. It is $15, so your savings isn't gonna be huge just because of the sale, but if you needed a lip balm, I do like the Laneige lip balm. The Ordinary Peeling Solution, I'm not a fan. Um, the, I also think it's just very harsh. I think um, you really should be under professional care if you're gonna use a peel like that. Drunk Elephant, the Littles, if you've been wanting to test out Drunk Elephant, it's it's a good collection. I just like Drunk Elephant in general and I like the full sizes because I feel like the Littles, like you'll get a good amount, but for any true change, you wanna go through a full size. Milk Makeup Kush Stash Bag Set. I, I mean, look, this is something I would have totally bought in the past. I definitely want to try the Kush lip balm. That's something I've been really interested in. You guys know I love the Kush mascara, but I would say just go for the full size Kush mascara. I mean, you don't need to do the trial size for this price. And um, the cooling water is nice, but it's not something I'm saying you have to go out and get. Peace Out Micro Needling Dark Spot Brightening Duos. These things are amazing. Um, it's really good. It's not the most sustainable packaging. I mean, it's a lot of waste for these little dots. I'm pretty sure it's not compostable. I don't break out a ton, but when I do, I do use these dots and like I wake up and my blemish is gone. For me, I don't feel like I'm overusing them. If you have a lot of breakouts, I would say there are better solutions that aren't as wasteful. But if you are someone like me who just gets one every so often, then this is a great way to like immediately get rid of that. The Dr. Jart came out with the micro needling blemish ones and the Dr. Jart ones I feel like are just a little bit more uh, str strong. Um, it Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC kit. I just, I'm not crazy about these kits right now. I think you end up buying a bunch of kits and never using it because I always focus on my full size products, but that's me. If you're someone who uses up kits and then go for it. Tatcha the Dewy Skin Cream. So I really love Tatcha products. The Dewy Skin Cream is definitely way too hydrating for me. I have combination oily and semi-dryness around this area. This just gets thrown off depending on the weather, depending on hormones and things like that. So the Dewy Skin Cream is too much, too much hydration for me, but if you have super, super dry skin, consider it. Drunk Elephant Slay Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser. I've been using this repeatedly to remove my makeup. I really like this product because it's clean, it removes my makeup really gently, but I also love it because it comes with bamboo exfoliation, so you can mix it in with the melt and exfoliate any of that dead skin cells. It's a physical exfoliant, which is awesome. It's using bamboo, very clean ingredients. I really enjoy this product. If you are out of a oil cleanser or a balm to remove your makeup or as your first step of your cleansing routine, I do recommend this product. I also recommend the Pharmacy Green Clean as well. Both of these products are very similar. The Drunk Elephant one is going to come with that extra little thing for exfoliation, so you're getting really two types of product in one versus just the Pharmacy one, which is just a uh, makeup melting balm. Glow Recipe Pineapple Sea Brightening Serum. I have not had a chance to test this out yet. I just received it in the mail. Glow Recipe Waterman Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. This actually is my favorite product 
from Glow Recipe. It has apple cider vinegar and a lot of other nurturing, hydrating ingredients. I love the mist. It's such a beautiful, fine mist. It's great for prepping the skin as well as setting your makeup. Focus Spot Micro Tip Patches from Dr. Jart. This one is really good. Out of all the micro needling acne spot treatment patches that you sleep overnight with, this one is my number one favorite because it's worked the best. It's $18, kind of pricey, lots of waste. It works. And when you have a blemish and you want to get rid of it, it works. Sunday Riley Captain Marvel Good Jeans All-in-One Lactic Acid. Now, this is a limited edition product. Good Jeans is not a new product. It's just the packaging. I really love Sunday Riley Good Jeans. I can't wait to like run out of product to go buy a new one. I love lactic acid though. My skin works really well with lactic acid. It's not enough for me to go buy it right now because of the sale or because of the Captain Marvel. I'm a huge Marvel fan too, but it just, it's not calling to me. Like I'm not gonna keep that packaging. I rather have a Captain Marvel eyeshadow palette versus skincare. Volution Beauty Strawberry Sea Brightening Serum. I haven't tested it. I'm not opposed to testing it, but I'm not gonna go purchase it right now. Bite Beauty Agave Daytime Vegan Lip Balm. I'm not a fan of their lip balm, but I absolutely love their new overnight lip mask that comes in the tub. So I highly recommend that one. I'm not a big fan of the lip balm because it feels a little too goopy for me. Kat Von D, Go Big or Go Home Mascara, I'm not really interested. Anastasia, Beverly Hill Dewy Setting Set setting Spray, I'm not that interested. The NARS Orgasm Liquid Highlighter, oof, it's good, I have it. And I've been using it on my cheekbones. It just gives me this glow from within. So good it is very good so if you wanted something like this I do recommend it it is also limited edition so keep that in mind milk makeup kush waterproof mascara mini I don't like waterproof mascaras I like the original kush mascara from milk makeup so I don't see a need for me to try the waterproof version the NARS endless orgasm palette so this was beautiful I love it because it's like a creamy shimmer and you can use it on your eyes face and lips now, if you're not a shimmery person, I would say skip it, but the packaging is absolutely stunning. The formula is very unique. It's this like glossy, glowy, dewy glitter. And if you like glitter and you like that dewiness and you don't mind a little slip and slide, you'll love this product. It's also limited edition, so if it's something up your alley, if you like that whole glossier like effect, if you like that type of makeup look, then this is something I see you liking. Definitely go touch it, play with it a little bit. So this is the one I was talking about, the Bite Beauty Agave Nighttime Lip Therapy. Obsessed, absolutely love it. It is my favorite new nighttime lip balm. I like it more than their original agave lip mask, which I've gone through countless, countless, countless tubes. Um, the reason I like this a little more is because it's a little quicker absorbing. It's still just as hydrating, still just as nourishing, still lasts all night, and I'm an open mouth sleep sleeper with drool. Um, <laughs> Chris is laughing at me. Because he knows, you know. <laughs> The reason I like this mask though is because it absorbs a little quicker and Chris isn't grossed out when I kiss him with it. Whereas the original Bite Agave lip balm or lip mask, like he'll be like, he'll come kiss me and then he'll be like, ugh. Because it's very goopy. Still like the original, but this one's a little bit better and it's like husband approved. Bite Beauty Outburst Longwear Lip Stain. I really like this. This was sent to me and I was wearing the red shade. I really liked it. It's a little drying, so what you'll want to do is prep your lips properly with a balm and then go in with this. And I personally smudge it in and then it lasts a really long time. I also just really love bite products because they're food grade products and I don't feel weird about eating them. Jouer Sunset Sun Swept Bronzer Duo, one of the best pressed bronzers out there on the market. Never patches. This is one of those areas on me that always patches, never patches and it's talc free. Thank you, Christina. Fenty by Fenty Beauty by Rihanna Sunstalker Instant Warmth Bronzer. I don't know that I want to look at their bronzer, but there's a lot of other Fenty products I'm interested in testing out. Bare Minerals Endless Glow Highlighter. I've really been enjoying it. I like Bare Minerals. You guys know I'm a fan. They also came out with bronzers that I also really have been enjoying. Okay, this is something I'm definitely considering adding to my shopping cart. This is the Ilia Color Haze Multi-Use Pigment. 
It's Ilia. It's clean. I love Ilia products. Ilia Soft Focus Foundation is one of my favorite clean foundations. Love their translucent powder. I also love their lower, um, I use and she was on my lower lash line like daily. So Ilia makes some of my favorite clean beauty makeup and it's still like very luxurious and doesn't feel like clean beauty makeup. I'm very interested in this color haze multi-use pigment. Might be adding that to my cart. Jouer Cosmetics Soft Focus Hydrate Inset Powder. This powder is really good. It's really good. It's great to set and it's great to actually um, help with a little bit of coverage as well. So I personally love it and I recommend it if you're looking for a new pressed powder. It's talc free as well. It's talc free plus pressed, which is awesome. So again, thank you, Christina from Jouer. But you don't have to use the sale. You can also shop directly through JouerCosmetics.com. If it's your first time shopping, I believe you get a higher discount. But if not, you can always use my code Serene15 for 15% off all of your purchases on Jouer's website directly. And when you shop a indie brand directly, they get more of the money. Whereas when you shop through Sephora, they split the profit with Sephora. So it's why if you can always shop directly with shops that are smaller because they are able to keep more of the profits and um, that's just that's just how it works let's see I don't really talk too much about hair I use like three hair products if that and kind of always use it and I use it for a really long time some of the brands I really enjoy that's available at Sephora Capari, Briogeo um, I really love RMS Beauty. I might actually consider repurchasing my Uncover Up because I used that all up and it lasted me forever. I was hoping to have used up some of my other concealers first though, so I might just hold off because I don't need to only shop RMS Beauty when it's on sale. I really truly value the brand and I'm willing to pay full price. If you need like a new blow dryer, a new curling iron, any tools specifically if you've been like needing one because yours is broken or it's on its last leg, this is when I would say that's the greatest time to buy things like replenishing on your uh, brush head replacements, replenishing on cleansing tools, replenishing on um, attachments on things, and of course, hair dryers, curling irons, those things. Um, not saying you have to buy those at Sephora, but if you're looking at them and that's kind of the price level you planned on spending anyways, take advantage of that 20% off. There are some thoughts I want to leave you guys with before I send you on your way. No matter what your budget or situation is, there's nothing wrong with wanting to buy things. It's more about finding a way to satisfy your wants, be happy with your choices, and not stretch yourself too thin, and being smart with your choices. It's just a matter of prioritizing and making wiser choices especially for me. And trust me, I used to go crazy when the sale came around. It wasn't until literally like about a year ago when I started putting rules in place. But before then, it just was out of control. And I have to be honest, even with my rules in place, it was still out of control for what I truly needed or wanted. I would get caught up in the frenzy. I would get caught up in this like, buy, 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 sell, sale, sale, sale. I need, I need, I need, and want, want, want. And I'd lose my mind. I literally lose my mind every time the sale came around. So if you feel the frenzy, if you feel the need to shop, but you don't plan on doing it or you wanna be more responsible about it, I'm here for you. Message me on Instagram, DM me, leave me a comment. I'm here for you. So if you feel the frenzy, if you feel the need, the urge to overspend, to shop, and you're on a low buy or no buy, or you're just trying to not go crazy, I recommend you watch my video, Losing My Status. And I recommend watching my original VIB sale shopping guide, which will both be linked in the description box. I also recommend a couple other channels here on YouTube, specifically Hannah Louise Poston, her most recent video talking about the Sephora VIB sale and how she approaches it or was planning on approaching it. And she also has a couple other videos from her no buy year. So if you're not gonna buy anything and you don't wanna buy anything, um, check out those videos as well from her no buy year. She's currently on a budget. So she is allowed to spend a little bit of her budget. 
And I also really re recommend Kelly Goosh. She does great beauty videos and realistic. So she still shops. She does a lot of project pans. She does a lot of no buy advice videos because she used to put herself on no buys and she does makeup inventory taking stock of her entire collection. Kelly does a really good job of finding that balance between spending and not but not overspending, wanting but not confusing it with need and adding conscious, mindful purchases to her makeup collection while still really loving her uh, collection. And someone that I really, really admire and love, um, she doesn't do a lot of beauty, but it's just, it always inspires me to just be more sustainable and more mindful and just more conscious about everything is Ali Cherry here on YouTube as well. I will link everybody's channels in the description box. Check them out. Let them know I sent you if you decide to go over there. I wish you luck. May the odds be forever in your favor. <laughs> Seriously, if you guys need guidance or help, DM me over on Instagram. Um, I will do my best to kind of like talk you down and I will probably update you guys in one of my weekly check-ins on whether I even shop the sale. Um, there's a couple items I want, but I don't even know if I'm going to shop the sale because there's other things that have been sitting on my wish list for a lot longer. So until then, I'll see you guys back here in my next video, which will be Sunday, which will be my check-in video. Bye!